is coming. All these voices. My name is James Hershey. Right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Pretty good. How's everybody tonight? Tonight's episode is one that I think we've both wanted to do for a while. It's one that the listeners definitely have wanted us to do for a while. And we waited until now to do it because it's October. It's coming up on Halloween. And we wanted it as one of our Halloween shows. Because we're doing four shows this month or five shows this month as Halloween shows that are on the scarier things. So this one is on shadow people. Now... Right off the bat, I'll say that there's less information about shadow people than there is about a lot of the other things that we do shows on. But a lot of people say that there's really nothing known about shadow people, and that's simply not the case. We do have some information. We just don't have a ton of information. So I want to go over... A few things here. First, I want to talk about some of the things that the shadow people have in common because there's a lot of different kinds of shadow people. And so, the basic things that they have in common usually they appear to be male. Now, that's a relative term because shadow people are just that a shadow. There's not a whole lot of features or anything like that, but the shape of it appears to be a male shape. They are also aware of us, and they are aware that we are watching them when we see them, and they react to us. So it's not like some some ghosts and, and stuff like that are basically just a psychic replay of an event that happened. So you're watching something repeat over and over again. It can't see you. It can't hear you. It doesn't interact with you at all. As far as that thing is concerned, you don't exist. Shadow people aren't like that. They, they are aware of us, and they interact with us. The typical shadow person is going to be very tall. It's somewhere between six and seven feet, usually. Now, there, there are exceptions you know, to everything, but usually it's in between six and seven feet. A lot of these things, when they're seen, people report that they are wrapped up in like a cloak. Like, you know, uh, in the old days, when guys would get all dressed up to go out, they'd have the top hat on and they'd have that, that cape-looking thing. That's what I'm talking about, a cloak. Um, a lot of times they say that they're wearing hats. Usually it is a wide-brim hat, almost like a cowboy hat or like one of the old Undertaker kind of hats. Their appearance is more three-dimensional than a shadow is. Like, a normal shadow almost looks flat. This has a lot more depth to it. It, it looks like, 
like a person standing there, but it's just a shadow. Most times when you see a shadow person, there are no features whatsoever to to look at. There's You can't see the mouth, you can't see the nose, you can't see the eyes, usually. Now, sometimes you will be able to see eyes, and when you can see the eyes, they are a very scary looking glowing red eye. And that's usually found on the the dangerous shadow people, the ones that are out to get you. Usually the ones that just sit around and watch you, you, you don't see eyes with those. I've never actually heard of a case, but I'm going to say that it's rare, but it might not happen at all, but I've never heard of it, where a shadow person actually has spoken or tried to communicate in any way with a person. Usually they just sit there and stare at you. Now, it might have happened where one has spoken, and I just don't know about it. But as far as I know, they haven't spoken. They're a lot like a ghost in a way that walls and doors and all that mean nothing. They can go right through the wall. They can go right through a door. Any kind of physical object that's in their way, they can just pass right through it as if they're a ghost. Now, this is kind of the thing that, that the majority of these shadow people types have in common. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the different, I don't know if you'd say the different kinds, but let's call it the different uh, motivations of shadow people, the different things that they do. You have shadow people that just kind of hang out and lurk. Now these are usually found inside of someone's home. A lot of times they'll be found in the bedroom because they like to stand and, and just watch you sleep. They'll stand in doorways and they'll stand in corners and in the closets and stuff like that. Now, the lurking shadow people usually don't seem to have any ill will towards you or any any evil intent. And actually, they really don't seem to have any intent at all. They just kind of stand there. I mean, these guys, basically what they do is they just kind of stand there and watch you. Now, sometimes they wander around and kind of stalk people. And they even follow people to where if you move to another house, they will move with you and go to the other home with you and continue to watch you. Now, with these shadow people, you kind of, when you see them, you see them out of the corner of your eye. And when you turn to look or you, you see them in, off in the darkness and you kind of squint your eyes to, to see if it's what you're really looking at, as soon as you do that, they just bail. They take off. They usually will go flying straight through a wall or a door or something and they're just gone. They don't like to be to be looked at back. Now these are usually in like a human shape. Sometimes they're wearing a hat and a cloak or, a, or like a big coat or something like that. Every once in a while you'll have one that is more of a, a vague figure that's just kind of the... Like you know those targets when you go to shoot those human silhouette targets? Sometimes you'll have one that's like that, that isn't a really well-defined human form, but it's just kind of the general outline of a human. That'll happen every once in a while, but usually it, they look like a person just made out of shadows. Now, usually when you see one of these or when one is around you, watching you, even if you don't see them, you feel a sense of dread. You feel scared. You feel like something bad's about to happen, and you have that feeling on the back of your neck where the hair stands up and you just feel like like somebody is watching you so we're able to sense these things even when we can't see them now the next group of shadow people i want to talk about are the the dangerous shadow people these are the aggressive ones that will actually try to hurt you now with these shadow people, you will run into these sometimes also in your bedroom. But it's a little bit of a different experience with these guys. Because where the lurking shadow people will just stand there and watch you. Usually when you see one of these guys, it's when you're sleeping and you wake up and it's on top of you, basically. Because what these shadow people like to do is they like to wait for you to go to sleep and they'll climb on your chest, and they will try to suffocate you. So you'll feel like you can't breathe, 
and like like you have a an elephant sitting on your chest and you'll wake up and it's like ah and then there it is right right in front of you they also do a lot of other things that are fairly mean they are the ones that will grab you as you walk by they'll grab your arm or your leg uh they'll pull your hair they like to poke and they like to shove people these are the shadow people that will do all those kind of things to you. So they actually try to hurt you and try to physically attack you. And these shadow people, a lot of times, will manifest with glowing red eyes. So they just have the look of being something that wants to hurt you as well. The next group is, I guess I'll call them transient shadow people. Now these shadow people seem like they could really care less about what we're doing. They have their own thing they're doing. They, they don't care what we're up to. They're not there to watch us. They don't want to hurt us. They're not going to follow us around. They're just kind of in the same area we are, and they're going about their own business, doing whatever it is they're doing. Now, out of all of these different types that I'm talking about, the transient shadow people are the ones that we really know the least about. We really don't know what they are, where they come from, or what the hell they're up to, I guess is the easiest way to say it. We don't know uh, because there's not a lot of research to look at on these guys. We know they've been seen and we know that they could care less. They don't follow us around. They just do their own thing. The next group is not really a motivation, but it's it's shadow people as omens, kind of like the Mothman. This group of shadow people, they don't want to hurt us. They're not doing their own thing. And they are watching, but they're there watching because something bad is about to happen. A lot of times when you get reports of these shadow people, it's before a, a disaster happens. Something all the way from as big as a 9-11 kind of situation, all the way down to a murder-suicide in a house somewhere from somebody you've never heard of. These things will show up sometimes a day or two before the event happens, and they'll just linger around the area waiting for the, the bad thing to happen. Now, we don't know exactly why they do this, but there are some theories. One of the theories is that the reason that they are there is because they feed on the negative energy. They feed on the disaster in some way, whether it's negative energy that they're, they're consuming or whether it's fear or evil or maybe a hundred different things. Whatever it is, it's a way for them to, to feed and to grow stronger is through being around these situations when they happen. That's one of the theories. Another one of the theories is that they simply enjoy watching terrible things happen to people. That they really don't like us that much. And it's kind of like in in ancient Rome when people would go to the Colosseum to watch the gladiators or to watch Christians fed to the lions or criminals executed. In the Wild West they used to watch hangings and stuff like that. It's that same basic idea that that these creatures enjoy watching people suffer and watching bad things happen now it could be a combination of those two theories because it could be that they feed on the negativity and the sorrow and the fear and all that and they enjoy watching it it it's really hard to tell there's no definitive answer but those are the two main theories on it the last one is the haunting shadow figures. Now these are the ones that are tied to a location. So they, they have to stay in one place, whether it is a house or whether it is a certain area outside or something like that. They're, they're tied to whatever location they're in and they only really stay there and haunt that area. Now there are several types of shadow people that make up this group. You have ones that are, are like the other shadow people that look like people. And these things are, 
they're kind of the ones that are also dangerous, just like the ones that, that try to attack you. These will, will try to attack you as well. They, they like to poke and push and pull hair and, and grab you and stuff as well. Now, these shadow people are not the ones that are going to be trying to suffocate you, though. They, they more just like to hurt you, but not kill you. The other ones are actually trying to kill you. Some of the other ones in this group are orbs. They're like black shadow orbs. I guess those really aren't shadow people, but they fit into this, this big group. Now, the last part of this group is a demonic shadow creature. Now, this is probably the most dangerous of all of them, because this one will actually really try to mess you up in twisted ways. This creature will get into your mind and manipulate your emotions. It will try to get you to do things, like maybe climb up on your roof and jump off. Or if you live next to a river, maybe it's going to have you walk into the river and drown. It does that. It tries to get you to kill yourself. That's the strong demonic shadow creatures that, that are able to do those kind of things. For the ones that are weaker, they are going to scratch you a lot. Um, and they're going to make you feel sick. Now, the stronger demonic shadow creatures can actually, actually give you illnesses. Okay, so these things can give you cancer. They can give you tumors. They can give you life-threatening illnesses. The weaker ones are just going to make you sick like you had some bad seafood where you're going to be throwing up and, and hitting the toilet, you know, for, for several days. Still terrible and still very scary, but they can't do what the, the strongest ones can do. The strongest of all the demonic shadow creatures are actually capable of full-on possession. So they can take over your body completely and possess it, just like a, like a regular demon would. They're capable of throwing very large objects at you. If they follow you where you're going, if when you're driving or something, they're capable of grabbing the wheel and yanking it and making you wreck your car and, and hurt yourself that way. They're really, really bad news. Now you have different, I guess you could say shapes, different types of, of shadow people. You have the human one that I've been talking about. This is the one that is shaped like a person. Usually the most times they're not that bad. You do have a couple that seem to be just pure evil. The, the majority of these that look like humans are the ones that are just gonna kind of be wandering around doing their own thing or just sitting there watching you do whatever you do and not bothering you really, just, just watching. You do have the demonic, you do have the uh, ones that try to smother you and that kind of thing, but they're a lot more rare than the ones that just watch and the ones that the transient ones. You also have uh, black mass shadow people. Now they're the same, I guess, general size of a person, but they're not really a human form. It's more like a, just a black mass type of shadow. And it, it'll give you kind of the impression that it's human, like it looks kind of like it might be, but it'll be blurred or fuzzy, or it, it basically it looks like like a camera that isn't focused, as opposed to a camera that is focused. Now, these things can change their shapes, uh, making themselves into more like a cloud shape, but it always feels to you when you're looking at it like there's some intelligence there, like it's not it's not just... A puff of smoke it's a it's something intelligent now these are most likely uh, negative spirits that are getting stronger they used to be human but they are growing more powerful in their spiritual form and they're changing they're they're losing their their human identity they're becoming shadow people and, and I think they do that by absorbing the negative emotions maybe that's why they feed on those things is because that's a way to gain power, maybe. that To me, that seems to make sense. I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff with shadow people is going to be speculation because we don't know for sure. There's, there's not a lot known about these things. But the stuff that is known, you can draw some conclusions from, I think. Now, the, the most dangerous of all these shadow people 
is the demonic shadow people that I was talking about. They are the ones that are the most dangerous and that should be avoided at all costs. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what to do about it if one's after you. Uh, on a lot of these shows, I can tell you how to kill these things. But with shadow people, I, I have no idea how you would kill these things. I've tried to find that information and I just can't find it. I would suggest if you have a demonic shadow person after you or one of the uh, aggressive ones, I would suggest that you try all of the normal standard things you would try. Uh, sage, you know, do some smudging with sage. Uh, maybe an exorcism. Get a priest to come in and bless the house. Try to rebuke the spirit in Jesus' name. Because whether you believe in God or not, supernatural things, as a general rule, they do not like it when you talk about Jesus to them. You know, I guess they're kind of like people in that respect. A lot of people don't like that either. But when you use Jesus' name, a lot of times, a lot of these things will back off. Now, I don't know if it'll work on shadow people or not. I've never had the experience with a shadow person to tell you whether it will work or not. But those are some things that I would try if it's after you. The best thing to do is to get the hell out of there if you can and hope that the thing doesn't follow you. If it does follow you, then, then you're going to have to figure this out uh, of how you deal with it. I, like I said, I would try all the normal things that you would try with any kind of demonic or, or uh, malevolent spirit. I would try the same basic things and see, see how it does. Now, these things are often a lot bigger than a normal shadow person as well, the demonic ones. Sometimes they have wings. Sometimes they have horns or really long fingers with claws. Now, like I said, these are shadow people. So all of those things are just the shape of it. It's not, you don't see well-defined horns. You don't see well-defined claws or well-defined wings. It's just the general overall shape of those things, but they're not the actual things. Now, usually with a demonic shadow person, and this is the kind of the silver lining here, the good news. Usually, these things are going to be tied to a specific location. So if you are in a home and you have a demonic or aggressive shadow person in that home with you and it's trying to hurt you, my very, very best advice to you is move. Pack your stuff and get the hell out. The overwhelming majority of times, these things cannot follow you. They are tied to the location they're in. So if you're not in that location, then you're not in any danger anymore. Usually, I got to throw that caveat of usually in because sometimes they can. But the overwhelming majority of times, they're tied there. They cannot hurt you if you leave. Now, they'll hurt whoever comes in after you, but they won't hurt you anymore and at that point, that's really what you're worried about is getting away. There are other forms of shadow people that don't really fall into any of those categories. One of the more common ones is uh, the old hag shadow person. That's one that, that looks like an old woman, like an old stooped woman. Um, there are also some reports, but they're a lot less common, of shadow people that don't really resemble humans, but they seem more alien, if that makes sense. More like, like, an, like an alien from outer space kind of shadow person. And then you also have sometimes there'll be animals, like dogs and stuff like that. But that's also a rare occurrence. I want to talk a little bit as I wrap up here about some of the theories of what these things could possibly be. Because we don't know for sure. There is no definitive answer to this. But there are theories out there of what they are. One theory is that they are ghosts. Now, this theory in part is true because ghosts have the ability to manifest themselves however they choose to. Sometimes ghosts will appear to you in their death state. Now, what that means when they appear in their death state is however they died, they appear that way to you. So if they got shot in the face, and that's how they died, then they appear as a person shot in the face. Their face is all jacked up. If they got hit by a bus, they might appear all mangled that way. If they burned to death, 
they might appear to you all burnt. That's what death state is. Sometimes they appear that way. Sometimes they appear in their elevated state or spiritual state to where they're, they're, they glow. You know, they're, they're more what you would think of as a ghost. They're, they glow and they're all beautiful and everything like that. Sometimes they appear in their prime state, which is however they look the best in their life. So let's say a guy dies of cancer and he's 87 years old. He's had a good run, but he's really, really old. He looks bad. He, he's wrinkly. He's old. He's stooped over. He either has no hair or white hair or whatever. He's an old ass man. Let's say that that guy dies. Now he might appear to you as a ghost in his prime state where he was the best in his life. He might appear in his early 20s as a strapping young man because that's when he felt like he was at his very best. Sometimes they appear that way. Other times ghosts will appear as a shadow person. Now, almost all the time when this happens, that ghost is going to be an aggressive spirit that wants to hurt you. That's the ghost that's going to be poking you and pushing you and pulling your hair and breaking stuff in your house and just being a pain in the butt. Okay, that ghost that appears as a shadow person is going to be nasty usually. Now, all of that being said, ghosts can manifest as shadow people, but ghosts aren't actually shadow people. It's like putting on a costume. So I don't consider them actually shadow people, but that is one theory of what shadow people are. I don't think the theory is true overall because I don't believe ghosts are shadow people. I think they just put on that costume. But that's the element of truth that's with it, but I don't believe the theory. The next theory is that these things are aliens, like from space. And the way that we are able to see them is as shadows, because they have some sort of cloaking device that enables them to camouflage their body and appear as a shadow. Now, this is your standard alien theory that every paranormal thing has. No matter what you're talking about, if it's unexplained, there's going to be some theory that involves aliens in it. I'm not saying this theory is not true, but I don't give it a whole lot of credibility because there's a whole lot of things that these things can do that seems more supernatural than it does alien technology. And also you have to look at motivation. If aliens are advanced enough to travel across the galaxy or maybe even across the entire universe to get here, if they're that advanced, why would they be wandering around your house poking you and, and stuff like that? It makes no sense. It's, it, if they wanted to hurt us, they would just destroy us. There's no reason to hide out as a shadow and wander your house and mess with you. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense. So I don't think that theory holds any water either. Another theory of what they are is actually very interesting to me, is that shadow people are actually time travelers. The basic theory goes that sometime in the future, time travel will be invented. And you will have people that travel back in time to witness certain events. And these shadow people are time travelers that are there to watch. This usually applies mainly to, mainly to the ones that just sit there and watch you and the ones that are omens that come in before a, a disaster happens. Because somebody from the future would have knowledge of a disaster when it happened and they would come there to see it. The reason why we can't see them, but we see a shadow instead, is because they're not really there. They're actually in the future, and what you're seeing is a form of a hologram that we, we perceive as a shadow. So that's the basic theory there. This theory, I'm not sure about. It's very interesting, and I'm a guy that is really into time travel and sci-fi stuff like that, so... I kind of want it to be true because it's really cool, but I don't know if it is true. I think what the actual thing is, is that shadow people are not one creature. 
it's actually several different kinds of creatures. I think you have the demonic shadow people, which are just that, some kind of demonic creature that wants to destroy you. You have the aggressive shadow people. I think those are most likely ghosts that are manifesting as shadow people and want to hurt you because they're just mean. I think that because a lot of the behaviors they have are the same kind of behaviors that angry ghosts have. They poke you, they shove you, they pull your hair, they, they uh, grab your arm and stuff like that. They knock stuff over. That's the kind of activity that you get from a malevolent spirit that is not happy and is, is just ill-tempered and, and wants to make your life miserable. So I think that might be what that is. As far as the ones that are omens, that is an interesting thing too, I'm not sure. It could be maybe the time travel theory. Maybe that is what that is, that they're coming here from the future to watch these events unfold. Maybe it is some kind of supernatural creature that feeds on sorrow and negative energies and fear. Maybe it is something completely different that we just do not understand. Maybe shadow people, those shadow people in particular, are kind of like the reapers. Maybe they're there to collect the souls of the people that die in that tragedy and take them wherever they're going to go after this. Maybe that's what they are. Because they don't really hurt anybody. They just kind of hang out and wait and wander around and look at things and wait for the event to happen. And they watch the event and then they go away. So maybe they're there just to bring the souls to heaven or hell or, or purgatory or whatever it is after this. Maybe that's their job. Maybe that's what they do. So I think you have a lot of different shadow people because they're different things. They have different functions and they're, they're completely different creatures. That's my personal theory on it. Now I'm going to throw over to old boy. He actually has some experience with shadow people. He's dealt with them in life and he has some interesting theories as well. So I'm going to throw to him now. Take it away, brother. And thank you, brother. That was a great uh, stories you were telling about uh, shadow people. This is one of my favorites because I've dealt with them and I'm going to talk about how I dealt with them first, and then I'll tell you guys what I think they are. And there's different ones anyway, and what I what I actually believe. When I was younger, probably about 10, 10 11 years ago, me and my ex-wife at the time uh, had an apartment. And actually, we weren't married yet, but but we kept hearing the neighbor always talk about this being they would see with red eyes and a black hat. We called the man with the black hat. I guess they saw it all the time. But I guess these apartments were haunted. I guess somebody killed themselves and old people lived there. And there was like a uh, duplex. It was like three apartments together. And then they had a laundry mat there. But she saw this thing. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. But one night, I saw something watching me with red eyes. I didn't think about it, so I just maybe it was just my imagination, you know, whatever. I was tired. My ex said that she numerously saw this thing watching her with a hat with red eyes, and I finally saw it. And you're right, you get like a dread, like something's going to happen, or they're watching you, or they're going to do something. Because what people don't realize, shadow people can watch you for many years and wait to your vulnerable times or your points, and attack you they can wait they will there's different that's one of the difference between different shadow people and there's someone just watches you like weirdos but i finally saw it she didn't want to tell me for months she finally told me well one night we were sleeping outside in a sleeping in the living room everything was dark and i saw the black mask mass and it's it it like he was saying, or orb. It was more like the orb, the black orb. And I seen it right in my face. And it just sat there looking at me for about 20 minutes. And then it went away. And then my friend, him and his wife at the time, were living in a, in a, a mobile home trailer, whatever. And he said numerous times, you better watch out for the black man with the hat. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? Like a, like, like a regular person? He's all, no, it's a being. It's a black figure with a hat with red eyes. 
And I didn't believe him. One night I looked outside and there it was staring at us. And it kept staring at us. And I guess it would follow him and it would come into to the trailer. And sometimes they would see it and sometimes it would be outside of, the, out of their house. I've seen it a couple of times. That's probably one of the main things I've always had, I had my experience dealing with them. I've never been attacked by one. I know that I seen one at my mom's house a long time ago. One time she walked in my room and says, James. And I turned around. She goes, I just saw somebody right behind me. She says it was a black figure. It was like a shadow of you. And that was really, really weird because it looked like me, but it was a shadow. And she said it, that's who she was talking to. And then it went away. And then I was standing there. So we've, I've dealt with it a couple times in my, my, my apartment and at my, my own parents' house at the time where I grew up when I was a young kid. I seen a couple things I didn't like when I lived there. And just to let everybody know, my, my mom's a reverend, so stuff comes anyway. And she was always into, you know, Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And unfortunately, I wasn't. You know, I went a different route. So I'm going to see things anyway. But shadow people, in my opinion, is is either they're a spirit, like he was saying, could pretend to be a shadow person, a ghost, or whatever you want to call it, ghost, spirit. Or I have a theory, they're from another dimension. And that's a lot of theories that I've heard, because when I first heard about the shadow people, because I didn't know what they were, was when I would listen to Coast to Coast with Art Bell. Now it's George Nori. You guys know who Coast to Coast is. One of the most famous show ever, and Art Bell is one of them too. I used to listen to that. I used to listen to the different shows about shadow people and how they were different, and they would either attack you, some would watch you, some were just, they would do evil things, and then there's demonic ones that would... And I have my opinion on that. I don't even think those are shadow people, the demonic ones. I think they're demons. And that they just portray themselves to be that. They can do whatever they want. Shadow people, What I, the other theory I have, other than being from another dimension, could be... The other theory is... And this is a new one that a lot of people don't think of. And this is one I've been thinking about for a while. Is that when you die... You know, what? if you go to heaven or hell, some people are going to say, I don't believe that. But just if you do, I believe when you, you say you go to hell or purgatory that you're a spirit, but I think your essence stays. Like your evilness, the more evil you were, your essence is more evil. Like the red, you're more, it shows more. Like if you see some are just like a black mass, some are, then that means they weren't that bad. But they get a full body, then that's something that happened. Uh, they, they're evil. Or... There, but they were, and then there's some that you could see like they had died in a certain way, but they were evil still. That's probably why you see that. They're just imprints of what, because you remember, like it says, you can't leave hell. Well, they're imprints of that, them attacking the normal human beings, uh, us, and that's how they do it. They attack us and they, they torture us because they're getting tortured in hell. That's their essence. That's another theory I've always had about that. I thought they might be their own, you know, what was the damned. And they found a way to come back, but not fully. And that's the way they do things is they watch us or they're, they're are torturing us. You know, they'll cut you and you'll do mean things to you. And then there's some it doesn't, so it doesn't make any sense. So it could be a, from another dimension is the other thing. That's another theory I've always thought too, what I was talking about a little bit ago. Is that could be, I believe that because we don't even know what these things are. I don't even know if they're a spirit, ghost, what are they are. They could have, they could just be like Jay, uh, Hershey was saying earlier, they could have a disguise. We just can't see them. Or they're from another dis a dimension, or that's what they come as, as our dimension, but they look like something else more sinister. Or, you know, it's just something pretending, pretending to be shadow people, what they're really not. So that, that I have many theories about what they are and what I've dealt with. And what I've always dealt with and seen is I've seen the being with the red eyes, with the hat. It scared the hell out of me. It's something you don't want to ever deal with. And the black orb really didn't bother me too much. But the man watching me all the time, that that's kind of eerie. If you ever had a... I don't know if you guys ever felt like... 
you, you have like something over your shoulder, like he was saying, the chills or a sh it goes behind your neck with your like with your spine. It's so cold, it's like a cold chill through your spine. That's what it felt like. It was like something so sinister just sitting there looking. It didn't do anything. I'm not going to sit here and say it did anything, but it, it watched me. And bad things happened in my house too. Like he was saying, things happened. You know, just bad things happen. And then like with. Another thing I was going to talk about is when he was talking about the ones that watch, you know, for dre the before something bad happens, they come and show up. It could be like that. They could be collecting the dead, or they just like to watch somebody get killed, or like watching that they get it. They don't. They're they're just evil. You know, I don't know if you guys seen the read the book Odd Thomas or the movie. It's kind of similar like that. He would see that kind of stuff, and. It could be just sitting there waiting for you to die and then takes your spirit and takes you away for wherever you go, purgatory, hell, whatever you want to believe in. Or it could just just like to watch you die because, they're you know, like they said, to get off of it. Maybe that's what they like to see, you know, or maybe there's some kind of other spirit like a wraith or a reaper that collect the dead. That's that's my theory. What do you think, James? I, I tend to believe the ones that are the omens, I think that's either a, a form of a reaper or, I mean, because think about, let's talk about a reaper real quick. Think about the, the image that we all have in our minds when you say reaper. We think Grim Reaper. We think Black Cloak, right? And Big Sickle. Now, these things don't carry around sickles, but they're often seen in a, in a Black Cloak. So, to me, I think... That makes sense, you know. I think the sickle is is a metaphor for harvesting the dead. I, I think that is a writer somewhere probably came up with that in ancient times as a metaphor and included it into the description of a reaper and it just kind of became part of the legend. To me, that just seems too perfect of a metaphor to be a real thing. I think that's somebody's little poetic license on the legend that said, you know, this is a perfect metaphor for reaping the souls. It will make him, you know, he, that's why we call him a reaper. So he's like harvesting souls. So you, in those days, when you would get your wheat and stuff like that, it was done with a sickle because we didn't have the machinery we have now. So if you think about the description of a reaper, these things fit. And also the, the time travel thing makes sense to me for that. It's probably far-fetched because scientifically, I don't believe time travel is actually possible but it's one of my favorite sci-fi kind of things but i just don't think it can actually really happen and there, there's a whole lot of reasons for that and that would be a whole nother show it would take way too long to explain it but i don't, scientifically i don't think you could actually really do that basically because time is is a human construct it's something that we kind of invented you know what I mean? We, we made up a calendar. We made up days of the week, all that kind of stuff. It, it, I don't think that's actual universal law. I don't think that you could, it's possible to travel back and forth. But I could be wrong. You never know. That makes sense to me there. That other theory that old boy had is really interesting to me as well because you have ghosts that are not intelligent. And I don't mean dumb ghosts that trip over stuff and bump into walls. I mean that it's almost what I would call a replay. You have some kind of event that's taking place and it took place sometime in the past and it was such a traumatic event that it just continues to replay itself over and over and over again. Now these ghosts are not an intelligent entity. It's not a spirit. It's not the soul of a human that's hanging out. It is a psychic impression of negative energy that is locked into into place where it happened so something bad happens and it's so bad that it leaves a psychic imprint in the area that it happened and that event continues to replay itself throughout time you see that a lot on battlefields right down here by where i live there's a battlefield and the legend goes that if you go out there at night that you can sit there and listen to the sound of the cannons and all that kind of stuff happening. And sometimes you'll see Civil War soldiers running back and forth and fighting each other and stuff. 
I haven't seen it myself. But I can tell you that I have been sitting in my home. Even sometimes while we're doing this show, I've been sitting listening while old boy's talking or something, and I will hear in the distance cannon fire. Now, usually when you hear something like that where I live, I live up in the mountains, so usually when you hear that, it's somebody either target shooting or during hunting season, it's someone got a deer or a bear or, or a turkey or something like that. But cannons sound a little bit different than normal guns. So I've actually heard that sitting in my home, but I haven't been at the at the battlefield and heard it. I can't tell you whether that story is true or not, but that is what is said. But that is a good example of what I'm talking about, of an event that was traumatic that replays itself over and over again. So that theory that Old Boy had, it, to me, is, is very interesting because we do have some evidence of that kind of behavior. When it, the, one, the theory I'm talking about, in case you guys are confused, is the one where he's talking about how it's just the essence of a person being an evil person that's left behind. And it, it relates to, to the ghost thing because the psychic energy that is left behind is just the essence of the event that happened. You see what I'm saying? So it kind of ties together. It. I never thought about it that way before with shadow people. But it, it makes sense because we do have some evidence of that already in other spiritual things. But like I said, I think that these are several different creatures. I don't think all shadow people are the same thing. I think that you have multiple different things. And I think with each one, there are multiple possibilities of what it could possibly be. And that's what makes shadow people so interesting so frustrating and so frightening is we just don't know for sure what these things are. Now, there's a lot of other things in the paranormal world that we know exactly what they are. We may not be able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they actually exist, but we know what they are if they do exist, and we do have evidence of them existing but the problem always lies in convincing the rest of the world that they exist. Because I, I truly believe that you could have indisputable proof of life after death. You could have very good film of a ghost. You could have a full hour of footage of this ghost going all over the place and doing different things in HD, full sound, best possible quality, you could have that. And there would still be over half the population that does not believe it's real. You're still going to have those people, no matter how good the evidence is, that'll say, oh, that's just CGI. It's fake. That's fake. You have it in every bit of the paranormal, every single part of it, whether it's ghost or whether it's cryptozoological creatures such as Nessie or Bigfoot, or whether we're talking creatures like a Wendigo or a Skinwalker or a werewolf or a vampire, no matter what it is, you are always going to have people that say it's make-believe. And that is the challenge that we all face as a paranormal community. We have to try to prove and convince all the skeptics that what we're talking about are real things. Now that is an almost impossible task because like I said, even if you have indisputable proof, there's still going to be people that won't believe it. And then the problem I think we have in the paranormal world is we're facing a challenge that is that hard. So even at our very best, it's a serious uphill battle. But so much of the energy that we should be spending answering the questions and finding the proof, so much of that time and energy is instead spent bickering back and forth and arguing with each other. 
And I think that's insane. I think it's, it's very sad. You know, and I know this is not about shadow people, this part. And I apologize for that. But I, I just feel like that has to be said. I mean, we've got to come together and we've got to quit all the little schoolgirl stuff because it's ridiculous. I see it every day. You know, I see it every time somebody posts evidence. I see this. It happens in the Facebook groups. It happens on YouTube. It happens everywhere. Whenever somebody comes forward and says, hey, man, I got this cool evidence of this EVP or I got this cool evidence of this picture, you know, check this out. And then in the comments section, you always have a bunch of people saying it's fake, calling them idiots, using foul language, and just being jerks all the time. And it, to me, it makes no sense. We've got to concentrate and come together and try to actually answer these questions and prove these things. You know, shadow people, that's something that we don't have a ton of information on, but there is information out there. And a lot of people will tell you that we know nothing about shadow people, and that's not true. There is information out there about these things. We have presented all the information that we have on shadow people during this show. So I really hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have information about the shadow people that we don't have, please feel free. Share that information. Let us know. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, comment down here in the comments right underneath this video. And tell us your story. Tell us about the shadow people. Tell us about your encounter with them. Now, I don't want to hear something you read on Wikipedia. I want, if you actually know what you're talking about and you have experience with, with shadow people, tell us a story, man. Tell us what, what happened. Because we're always wanting to learn and gather information and gather evidence to try to actually prove these things exist. So if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel so that you can see all of our other shows. Uh, for the people listening on the radio right now, please go to the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. And subscribe to the channel. There's all kinds of cool videos on there and all the shows. And I'm going to throw over to Old Boy real quick and let him do all of his shout outs and everything. And then we'll wrap this puppy up. So Old Boy, take it away, bro. Thank you, brother. I, I'm glad we did this episode because uh, I always enjoyed the shadow people. I've always loved it. And I'm glad you said what you said. I'm getting sick of people who saying things don't exist when they don't even know. They read something on, uh, uh, like you said, the internet or, uh, or see something on YouTube and they think everything doesn't exist because they don't see it. Or they're just scared that they don't want it to be real. That's what mo most of the time it is. It's ignorance in people who are actually really scared if it exists. I want to give a shout out to everybody on Para-X, uh, including uh, Columbia and Sweden, who are now are listening to our show and Para-X2 all together. Um, all our listeners, I love you guys on YouTube, everything. I um, want to give a shout-out to my beautiful fiancé. Uh, I'm going to get a shout-out to Unearth Films, and Marcus Cook's going to be on our show next week. We're going to do another, because this is Halloween. Tech, we're kind of doing the show on the four, uh, uh, the 13th anyway, kind of around that area, Friday the 13th, and it's Halloween in the same month in October. So we're going to do that uh, about real-life horror movies that, you know, the movies are based off of horror movies and the real stories with him, and that should be a real treat. So I love you guys. Have a great night. Misfits, Sugar Ladies, and Demon Hoes, I love you. God bless you. Blessed be. Have a good night. Yeah, Marcus is scheduled for next week, and hopefully we will get that show done, and you guys will be able to hear it. Uh, Marcus is the director of 100 Tears, and somebody he's got the new uh, American Guinea Pig stuff. So he's a, a famous director, and sometimes when you deal with those people, conflicts come up and they can't make it. But he is scheduled. He has done our show before. He is very stoked to do it. So hopefully we'll get that done and you guys can hear it next week. I think it'll be a really interesting show. Like old boy was saying, it's the true story behind some of the horror movies. So that should be really awesome. Um, also, I just want to say thanks guys for listening. We love you guys. We appreciate you uh, all over the world. All of you. You know, you don't just have to be in the United States. Like old boy was saying, Sweden, Colombia, Australia, China, Italy, England, all of you guys that are listening. We love you very much, and thank you so much for your support. Thank you for listening, and until we speak to you again, 
Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. We love you guys. Bye-bye. All these voices.